Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zen. Hello. And we're here today to talk about... What's Shonen Archive? Holy shit, how did I forget? <laughs> What's Shonen Archive? Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen dedicate our entire lives and beings to watching the entirety of Shonen Jump anime available to us. Starting with Gintama talking about Jujutsu Kaisen and Kuroko's Basketball. Uh, today we're going to be going through Gintama, episodes 171 to 176, and I feel it's important to mention, because I actually got some backstory for this specific end of season thing that will help explain some stuff, um, but literally the there's a lot of filler in a lot of these episodes kind of coming up, and the reason is is that it goes into it in one of the episodes, they are literally caught up to the manga. They are neck and neck with the manga in terms of production, resulting in there being some filler that was not in the actual manga. There's actually not that much filler in Gintama in general. I think I looked it up, and there's about 22 episodes worth, not counting the next season, which is its own thing that I'm working on in the background to kind of address and talk about. But they were literally neck and neck, and... So that's why there's a little bit more filler than what we're used to compared to uh, old times where at least everything that we saw was actually from manga chapters. So that would probably help explain a little bit of the things that's been going on is that they're actually legitimately caught up in. Uh, it will help explain some things when we get to the near end of the season where there will be a hiatus of sorts for the Gintama anime that me and you will not experience because we just weren't watching it back then. But there you go. There's some updated history about where we're currently at in Gintama. And speaking of, let's get right into episode 171, which is a two-parter, which is part A is called You'll get sued if you do all that. Uh if you if all you do is copy others and then part 2 is called You don't know what you've got till it's gone. Uh so go ahead and tell us what happens in part A of episode 171. Part A is uh, two burglars break into the odd jobs place and they're trying to steal stuff. And I don't, it's a Gundam reference. I don't know. It is a, this I don't is, know it. This is the unofficial 30th year anniversary celebration of Gundam, is what they say at the beginning of this part. Uh, Raul was the dude that they are referencing in Gundam. And similar to you, this is another case of both of us are. Uh, up shit creek without a paddle because yeah we... i don't really watch uh, gundam like <laughs> i watched gundam wing i watched g gundam that was really it um and apparently this is a parody of like the original like that like that MSG, could like that like i could tell suit gundam, like the yeah. first one. that i could tell because i've actually seen original mobile suit gundam at least a couple a little bits of it uh and i could s at least see that there um, because they do a lot of the camera shots <laughs> that are very similar, uh, to it and everything. Like, the close-up, face-up shots, the, like, ding, like, the little noises, it's very similar to, uh, an old, old, old anime. But yeah, but you're in general, we're both here, we're both, like, are not very affiliate with what's going on, <laughs> but go ahead, try and tell us yeah. what, what's going on. Yeah, but they're, they're basically like, oh, they're gonna go and break into the house, um... And they're, like, looking around, and different people just keep showing up at the house. Like, I think they find um, Sachan, like, in one of his, like, drawers. Um, then Hasegawa shows up. The maid robot girl shows up. A bunch of people just keep showing up and, like, almost catching them, but then not actually catching them. Um, Katsura shows up and does find them, but then he completely gets their identities wrong. He, like, doesn't get it right. Um, <laughs> he says Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah, he says they're Mickey Mouse, but they bleep it because apparently you can't say Mickey Mouse in Japan either. Yeah. Um. And then they like trick Gintoki too, and he's like, "Oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's whatever." And then Sachan falls out of the cupboard, and she's like, "They're burglars!" And so Gintoki beats them up and throws them and Sachan out of the house. <laughs> yeah which is uh i actually like that point where they're like saying like damn we've really been bested but you didn't do it alone then he throws such on immediately afterwards yeah <laughs> which i uh the the running bit with her was easily the funniest part of this episode for yeah. me when i guess she like tied herself up in his closet waiting for him to come back 
and people keep finding her and just like closing the door. The uh, just <laughs> they see her, they see her wiggling, and they just close it, not questioning it. They just gotta yeah, just close it and go on with their business. It happens like three times. Yeah, that was really funny. Um, I like I like the bit where after he throws him out, uh, Katsura goes, "Mickey, no." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, Kentucky's like screaming at him and Katsura runs out and he goes, Mickey Mouse, no! <laughs> and then Kentucky's like, what the hell are you talking about? And the yep. episode just ends. Yep, there he just ends right there. Um, yeah, it's a very silly episode. And again, this is kind of lost on us because we're just out of our park here. But thankfully, like every single second, Crunchyroll was saying, here's a reference to this Gundam. Here's a, this is literally just word for word stuff that was said by these characters taken here. Here you go. Um, so I couldn't really fall back on any of that to know if any of it was good. I know they really like Gundam, so I think it's funny to do an unofficial 30th year anniversary special for something that is not affiliated to you at all. Um, yeah, the Sanchan was definitely the funniest for me. I like when, um, Tama shows up and she's just, like, fucking up the house. Yeah, she's like, uh, Sakata, Sakata, she keeps palming the doors and, like, smashing them open. Yeah, and then she goes like, okay, scanning, four life forms found, none of them him. I'll come back for the rent later, goodbye, and then she doesn't clean after herself at all. She just leaves it the mess that it is. Um, <clears throat> I like the, obviously the bit with uh, Katsura I thought was pretty funny. And the Sachan thing was funny, but it's a very much a follow-up from a previous arc. Okay, very silly. Okay, done. <laughs> and it's over. Some little chuckle moments, but that's about it. It's a part A story. It's it's not the the best part A. It is just a very decent, okay, some chuckles here and there, and I'm, I'm good. It would have been a little bit better if I had actually known Gundam, I feel like, but I just don't know it on that way. I'm just not that level. Not on that, uh, not, the, not on the level, I'm sorry. Oh, I also did like it when Katsura does a Mickey Mouse impression. <laughs> yes. Which apparently, uh, Katsura's voice actor also voices Zexion. Yeah, one of the bad guys from Kingdom Hearts. That's funny, but there you go. That's how I feel. How do you feel about Zen? Yeah, it was fine. It was pretty funny. I thought yeah. it was good. All right, fair enough. We'll move on to part B, which is you don't know what it's got till it's gone. Go ahead, Zen. Uh, there's not even really much to talk about. In this no, one. there is not. Uh, Gintoki's taking a shower. He's going bald. Uh, he's freaking out. Then he goes to talk to Kagura. Kagura's also going bald. Uh, then Shinpachi shows up. He's also going bald. Uh, they sit around and talk about going bald for a while. Uh, and then they find out that it was a virus caused by aliens and Catherine has the cure. Uh, and they start beating her ass to take it from her. And then Sadaharu eats it because he also is losing his fur. Oh, which but is then the saddest scene ever. And he grows like a shitload of hair, and then the episode ends. The saddest scene ever when Sadahari was missing hair, and you see this yeah. half naked dog, and he's so sad. <laughs> he's so. He's, oh. <laughs> it's a very simple episode. Uh, I liked all the bits where they started talking about other anime series. <laughs> when Gintama really wants to just like say, like, hey, we don't got anything to talk about, they will start arguing about other series. So in this one, they argue about two of them. One of them, I believe, is the... No, it might not be this one. It might be the next one. But in this one, they definitely talk about Krillin. Because they say, like, what if all of our main characters... I think they talk about Krillin and Nappa, right? Yeah, they do. They talk about... Because they say... Um, they say, like, it'd be really bad if we had an entire show of just Krillin. And then he goes, what's... the what's Because I think uh, uh, Kagura says, like, you, of course you would like a show of all Krillin. You're the Krillin. And then he goes, what's wrong with Krillin? Yeah, he can use the Destructo disc. And then also, <laughs> when he did it, Vegeta was so worried he yelled at Nappa to get away from it. <laughs> Which is pretty funny, where he's just hard defending uh, Krillin. I also like that shot of them where they all dress as Krillin and they're doing like the. the Shinpachi's doing the thumbs up <laughs> from Krillin. Uh, they're all wearing uh, the, the six dots on his head, which is pretty funny. Um. I'm a big fan. I'm a very big stickler for Dragon Ball references and just about anything. Uh, other than that, yeah, it's a very simple. Uh, I'm bald. You're going bald. Oh my god, bald. And then <laughs> the very silly situation. And then it just <laughs> ends. <laughs> but it goes on for uh, quite a bit. And there you go. So yeah, that's how about 
there's really not much to say about this one. Yeah, okay, so yeah, they do talk about, because they talk about um, the Akuma Chojin, which is the group of characters from Kaniku Man, and they start talking about, like, um, you're gonna be, you're like Buffalo Man, and then <laughs> they start talking shit on Buffalo Man, because they're like, he's not even a part of the main uh, uh, Akuma Chojin, he's like one of the side ones, and then Shipachi has enough, and he goes like, stop <laughs> making fun of the Akuma Chojin and their current status. I thought that was funny because uh, I'm a big Kaniku Man fan. So similar to the this one, I'd like the Gundam one. I'm here for the Kaniku Man references. <laughs> yeah, it, they, the references do hit better when you actually understand them. Yeah, I, I agree. I also did like that bit where they're talking about like we have to change the OP, and they show the OP. It goes like, "What if we get wigs?" And they show them with like all different hair. And um, again, oh yeah, had... apparently those are Black Butler characters that they're wearing wigs of. I did not, really? That's what it says right here on this oh, list. Okay. But, no, the, but uh, uh, Shinpachi was um, a character from Kaniku Man. Yeah, Shinpachi he... is just like a monk. <laughs> yeah, he has the <laughs> the, the curry the, the, the sign on his forehead. Yeah, yeah the, the, that one, the, um, which is pretty funny. I usually remember the English names. So I always get confused with the Japanese names. Unfortunately. Dick Dick Van Dick is not Dick Dick Van Dick in the Japanese version of, Ult- of uh, Ultimate Muscle. He is a Japanese style name. So some of the names get changed. Uh, I know Robin Mask and stuff like that, but yeah. Anyway, very okay. Very liked it. So yeah, that's how I felt. How do you feel, Zen? It was just kind of nothing. It was borderline like not even yeah. didn't need to be there. It is filler. This was not based off a chapter or anything. But yeah, they... but it wasn't even really like good filler. It was just like sound. It's yeah. just them making noise. Fair enough. Very fair. And we will move on to episode Oh, one. I did like the bit where Catherine is like, um, why don't you call me Catherine Sama if you want it, my, my cure? And uh, they don't just like grab her. They literally start beating the shit out of her. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like tackle her to the ground and they're all just punching her for it repeatedly. That is funny. The, that part was funny. I do yeah, like it whenever it. Catherine is uh, in in peril. I also realize that uh, Catherine is the only woman who does not get a full uh, thing at the in the ED because every yes. she she's a she she appears in it, but she's not. She doesn't get like a still frame of her face forward as she looks on. Yeah, she's the, the background of um... two of them. She's in Thomas yeah. and uh, Tose, is, I think. Yeah. Um, but I realized that I was like, that's actually pretty funny. The continuing anti cat girl agenda that is Gintama. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to episode 172, where it's called It All Depends on How You Use the Carrot and Stick Method. So, uh, Shish and Gumi catch a serial killer, and they're like, we gotta, we gotta figure out what he knows. So, we're gonna give him the carrot and the stick. We're gonna. We're going to be mean to him and then be nice to him, and it's going to make him talk to us. So they send in Yamazaki, and he's, like, screaming at the guy. <laughs> he starts screaming um, about the production issues of Gintama. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, all right, we'll have Kondo go in. And Kondo's like, here, I, here's some food. And he, like, grabs his face and shoves it into the food. And then he's like, you know what? I have a son around your age. You remind <laughs> me a lot of my son. And, uh... Hijikata's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're saying, how old are you? Your son would need to be like 90 years old. Um, and then they start making more references to Japanese TV shows that I don't know, so I don't really understand that. No, full um, on like death scenes? It is intense, the amount of... Yeah. And he's like telling this insane story that's like, oh, my son was training to get bigger muscles, and then he ended up like with these Olympic athletes... And then they ended up wearing suits of stolen muscles, and then my wife died because of her lack of muscles. And he just kind of like, what the fuck is going on? And then the uh, serial killer vomits on him because the food that he gave him was rotten. And Kondo was like, it, no, it's not. I was saving it to eat. It's only three days old. <laughs> um and then Sogo and Hijikata are like, wait a minute, we're the, we're the best at this because you're an insane sadist and I'm always fixing everyone's fucking messes. So we'll be the best at the stick and the carrot. And they go to do it uh, and then they realize that they need to do it the other way around because this guy's a masochist. So the stick doesn't work on him because he likes it. So the carrot would be what he doesn't like. Um, and so they, they start getting blown back by his like 
because he's been carrot and sticking them as well. And they start losing because his carrot is too strong. Uh, but then Kondo and Yamazaki come back and they all team up. And they're having like this dramatic moment where they like go to jump the guy. And then another Shinsengumi guy comes in. He's like, hey, there's some kind of mix up. This is just some dude that has the same name. Yeah, he was like a, a good episode. Samaritan. <laughs> yeah, just the guy. Uh, it, yeah, and it ends right there. Uh, in this one, I really liked how the the dude in the beginning. So before you know that he's like a because uh, in the beginning they establish him as like he's like a serial murderer because he's murdered so many of them. He's crazy. Obviously, he's always smiling. Uh, when Yamazaki starts talking about all the production issues of Gintama, he starts saying like, at, at this point he's like, this is no longer you talking, this is Sorochi talking. <laughs> he is giving out his grievances about how he currently writes Gintama. <laughs> that is actually what's going on here. Um, he starts comparing himself to like another manga artist. He goes like, how am I supposed to compare to him? <laughs> like, look at my, look at my stuff. I'm shit. I'm nothing. <laughs> and then the dude goes like, um... The path to the top will grow longer if you belittle yourself. <laughs> a mountain peak does not exist to show how small you are. It is there to provide you with a goal. Even if you do not climb the mountain, at least your your view was better. And that fucking knocks out Yamazaki. <laughs> I thought that was very funny how he was like so supportive. And it was like, oh yeah, don't, you know, don't worry about it. You'll be okay. Um... And then the same thing with uh, Kondo, because when Kondo starts going on to this long spiel about his son and the missing muscles, uh, (laughs) it's also funny because he starts saying, like, um, the reason that his son couldn't go to his, it's like, I expected my son to be there because um, it was his fault that she got went like this, but of course he couldn't be there because he was in jail, so he wasn't there for when his wife died. He talks about, like, how the, the burden of a parent and the burden of a of a but what is the burden of a child and stuff like that he like he gets the the killer on his like side and he starts like crying and he's gonna say i need to say something but then turns out he vomits and then when he's giving him the spiel about like oh man i'm sorry about the the rotten katsudan the killer dude says like you're talking about the parent and the child but let me tell you about what about the the benefit of the friend the friend is supposed to be there for you as well to help you out. And that the talk about him being his friend is enough to knock Kondo out. And then when Kondo is on the floor, <laughs> Okita takes it really hard. <laughs> and he goes like, Kondo, no! And he's like covered in like vomit and shit. And he's like going yeah. up to him. <laughs> it's so funny because he's like so heartbroken that something happened to Kondo. And it reminds me of um, the backstory you had about how much he likes Kondo. So it was actually kind of nice to see Okita actually care about someone <laughs> to such a deep value. Like he didn't care if it happened to anyone else, but specifically because it happened to Kondo, he's he's devastated about it. Uh, and then when they try and carry it and stick him using Hijikata and Okita, it's really funny because Okita like fucking dive, <laughs> Doctor Doom dive kicks. Yeah, he the does table. a giant like foot dive. <laughs> uh, and then Hijikata comes in for the rescue, which is really funny because he like zooms in, and then when they they get him, he's like, "What are you guys?" doing <laughs> I, I don't understand what you're doing um and yeah and i really like the ending bit where they after they reveal like yeah he's just a really good samaritan and he was just caught in the unfortunate crossfire and then they leave and he's like he wasn't trying to carry it and stick us he was just a really nice guy we did yeah, all he that. was just a nice person in general <laughs> this is just a nice man that we've done this to <laughs> we've <laughs> made so many mistakes <laughs> that was funny and yeah, I ended up liking this episode. I really like the Shins and Gumi in general, so it was just kind of nice to. S- <laughs> yeah, when there's for some reason when there's like filler bullshit, I feel like it's always funnier with them than it is with the actual main characters. Yeah, I, w- I would. And I agree. don't know if it's because the main characters like don't have really anything that they do, whereas like with the Shins and Gumi, it's always like cop, silly cop stuff. So like they have something that they can always make jokes on. Whereas with the main cast, there's, they're, because they do, like, everything, uh, there's no, like, thing that they can riff on automatically. But it's I, always funnier, I feel yeah. like. It's 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 because they can't actually give them a job. Like, they're, they are the Odd Jobs crew, but very rarely do we actually ever see them do an Odd Job. Um, where the Shinsen Gumi, they're cops. They know for a fact, like, okay, they can get them into a silly situation, and it's funnier with them somehow. Um... 
I was actually looking this up, apparently, because uh, I was looking through a specific site for some future idea stuff, something that someone linked me to a long time ago. But apparently when Gintama started, uh, it was super crazy unpopular, and the thing that actually saved them was the introduction of the Shinsengumi. Like, the, he brought them in, and then by value... Like, if things were so dire, he's like, I don't think... The, Gintama ends on volume two. This thing is not lasting. <laughs> <laughs> but then he introduced the, the Shinsengumi, and that was able to kind of, like... It introduced something to the series that was, like, able to kind of keep it going. And I think that's where you see it here. Where it's, like, something like this. For some reason, it works really well with the Shinsengumi, and I can't really put a finger as to why... <laughs> They're just funny. They're just really funny. Yeah. They have a really good, like, dynamic with each other, too, because unlike the main group, which... The, I, I Don't get me wrong, I love the main group. Yeah. But I feel like they get a little stale because they're always the same. Yeah. Like, Shinpachi's always just screaming about how everyone else is annoying and weird. Kagura's always being, like, a little gremlin. And then Gintoki's always somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. He's either the one that's doing the screaming with Shinpachi or he's leaning in with Kagura. Like, he's, he's on either side of the fence. Whereas with the Shinsengumi, at any point, any one of them could just be completely fucking unhinged while the other ones are like, w- what's happening? And it's like <laughs> chaos. It- it's great. Like it's, A lot of times, Hijikata is the straight guy. Or straight man, straight guy. Yeah. The straight man. <laughs> but uh... Please, Zen, my fanfic says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, like, there's a lot of episodes where he's not. Like in this bit right here, when he's like, "I'm gonna be the ultimate carrot," and he like princess carries the guy, <laughs> and he's like, "You're safe now." <laughs> like, it's really funny. It is. And then there's other parts where like they're if we go all the way back to when they're doing the Go Go Thirteen bit, where they're like saying like, "I'm Gorilla Thirteen, I'm Okita Thirteen. That one ends with Okita, uh, not Okita, but Hijikata was kind of the one that was trying to keep him in line. And then it ends with him being Mayo 13 and actually saving the day at the end. Like, I see what yeah, you're coming exactly. from. Yeah, exactly. Where it's like, you There's can't... actually a really good, like, example of what we're talking about right now in the last episode, the countdown episode. Yeah, yeah. Fair, fair. Because when, when Hijikata gets the cool line and Gintoki's like, that's bullshit. This guy's a loser and an idiot. <laughs> and then they play all of the clips of him being stupid. It's, it's like, like a perfect stuck, example yeah. of what we're talking about. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I get where you're coming from with that. Yeah, I think for, for filler bits at least. Again, because typically whenever it's, when it comes to the main Gintama group, my favorite parts are when they're actually just like, when it's when it's something that I would consider filler stuff, it's usually them talking about other shonen jump things and making fun of them or yeah like, having, like being meta yeah, yeah or like having just like conversations that you would expect to have like with a friend or something for it's like oh yeah you know buffalo man he's a bullshit chojin hero is like okay you know what first of all step the fuck back let's talk about this a little bit more like that's the stuff i typically like from them but sometimes they can kind of get into the mix of just like okay like i think the one that you get this the worst in is probably actually the best way to kind of look at their dynamic is actually the upcoming up the elevator one because that is 100 percent what it kind of turns into where it's th- them actually playing against the idea of what is typically what you would expect from gintoki and kagura and it's kind of some of the stuff that we're talking about here so maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to it but either way i think the shins and gumi are really funny and i think this episode worked out for me pretty well and this is actually not filler <laughs> This is an actual chapter one too, so that makes it <laughs> doesn't. I don't know if it makes it funnier, but at least something to notice. That does make it a little bit funnier to me that this is they made a whole fucking chapter <laughs> out of this. It is, uh, which is probably what the the Yamazaki thing when he was complaining about like, oh man, that we're literally getting manuscripts handed to us and faxed to us every single day. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. So yeah, I like this one, and I assume you like this one as well. Yeah, I did. Yeah. It was good. Good, good stuff. Even with we, even though the condo one was completely lost on me, I still found it very funny. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, I thought it was funny too when he gets like really hurt that the guy doesn't want to eat the rotten food. <laughs> His rotten like, katsudon. No, hey, don't don't say that. <laughs> and then when he's dying and he puts the katsudon in his throat, he's like, "Is that supposed to be a cigarette?" <laughs> when he's <laughs> treating him like a fucking three day old katsudon. <laughs> <laughs> That was episode 172. Let's move on to episode 173, which I believe is another part A and part B. But they're both called the same thing. It's called What's on the Inside That Counts. 
It's and then the other one. It, oh, okay, I guess we'll get into that. But for this part one, it's it's what it's what uh, it's what's on the inside that counts. Go ahead, Zen. Tell us about it. Uh, so Kentucky is uh, taking Sada Harbor for a walk, and he's like, "This fucking sucks because you're a million pounds and you're gonna shit in the street." And Cogger is supposed to take you for a walk, but can't because you fucking she won't do it. And he's all pissed <laughs> off. And then Katsura and Elizabeth show up, but like Elizabeth does not look right at all, like completely wrong. <laughs> the, the, uh, yeah. And he's like, "Hey, that's not Elizabeth." And Katsura's like, "What are you talking about? <laughs> Looks perfectly fine." <laughs> uh, and they go to a diner, and then Elizabeth no longer communicates using signs. Uh, now they communicate using their Nintendo TS, which is a Nintendo DS. <laughs> By like writing on the screen, um, and he's like, "All right, what is this? Like Americanized Elizabeth?" And she's like, "No, I'm I'm Russianized." <laughs> <laughs> um, so they keep going around a bunch of different places, and they start spying on them, and they find out that the fake Elizabeth has like a bunch of um, hostess stuff, like for, to go to a hostess club, like the to Shinpachi sisters' workplace mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um. And the, the the fake Elizabeth keeps bribing people to be like, yeah, that's Elizabeth. <laughs> like that's <laughs> normal. Yeah. Um, eventually, they go to the hostess club, and Katsura finally realizes something is wrong. But then fake Elizabeth bribes Gintoki and everyone with a bunch of money in the hostess club, so they can go crazy. And they're like, yeah, we love new Elizabeth. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, old Elizabeth shows up and shoots the fake Elizabeth in the face with a rocket launcher. Uh, and it blows it through the wall and explodes, and I, I assume kills it. And then Katsura comes back, and they're like, hey, he's like, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth's like, in tears. And then Katsura goes, hey, you dropped your Nintendo TS. You better not fucking, that's expensive. <laughs> you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna ruin your life one day if you don't take care of your shit. He says, he it's, out. your Nintendo is like a friend, and you should never abandon a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and he just leaves. <laughs> And yeah, it ends with Elizabeth shooting him with the rocket launcher. <laughs> you don't see it happen, though. It happens off screen. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this part A1 here. First of all, I was a little bit hesitant because the last time we had a... This is technically a two-parter, but this is a part A and part B where one of them is uh, Elizabeth and the other one is Sadaharu. And the last time we had an episode that focused in on both of them combined, it was one of the worst episodes of Gintama that we had ever seen. <laughs> yeah. So I was coming into this a little bit cautious, but I actually did like this one. Um, the Russianized jokes was pretty funny. The fact that this Elizabeth looks nothing like Elizabeth and Katsura's like, I don't see the issue here. Like, at one point when they talk about, like, hey, isn't it kind of weird with everything? <laughs> Is it everything that, like, they keep pointing out to it, like, when they say, like, hey, fill out this form. And this will tell us whether or not this is your Elizabeth. And uh, the fake Elizabeth fills it out for him. And they see, like, look, Katsura, isn't this weird? And then Katsura's like, oh, Elizabeth. You learned how to write. <laughs> like, you're not writing on signs anymore. And he starts, like, breaking down in tears. He goes, like, oh, my God, Elizabeth, you won't believe it. I always hated having to clean up after your signs. And he shows his flashback with the old Elizabeth of him cleaning up the signs of the throwaway signs that Elizabeth would write on and then throw away because they only had, like, one thing to say on them. And then they say, like, <laughs> I think it was either Shinpachi goes, uh... Can you not clearly tell that is a different Elizabeth in your flashback? And then someone else points out, like, this is also you clearly just, like, talking shit on Elizabeth about how much you hated something that they did. Um, I thought that part was funny. The fact that they, they just kept playing on their Nintendo was pretty funny to me because I like Nintendo and it reminded me of the Nintendo DS. Um, when they're in the hostess club and they're partying out, uh, I like how... When he starts throwing, I forget, they start saying, they say something, and he goes, like, all right, order whatever you want. Because they, they're accusing him of saying, like, um, when they're trying to convince uh, Katsura, he walks away. And then Tay starts, like, saying, like, all right, more drinks, because the fake Elizabeth is, high, like, buying drinks. He goes, like, can't you see he's trying to swindle you? Can't you see that he's going to just, like, cut the money and run? And then that's when he puts up with his Nintendo saying, like, hey order whatever you want and he just drops a fact stack of cash on the <laughs> yeah he's they're like what, what is this fake elizabeth and he just pulls out this giant stack of money and drops it on the table 
<laughs> that was really funny. And then they everyone starts partying. I also like that this is the continuation of the shitty makeup job of uh, Kagura. <laughs> Because this is the, the 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 makeup she's wearing here is similar to the last time that they were doing a hostess club where they just put like a fuck ton of make where she just put like a fuck ton of makeup on her face. So it was like it was funny to see it back here too. But yeah, and then I liked it when the fake Elizabeth uh, with the real Elizabeth showed up and blew up the fake one, and it was clear that they had gone and fucked up, <laughs> and they had been they had gone through some stuff uh, since then. Uh, and when they're trying to reunite, it looks like they're going to have a sweet moment. But of course, Katsura completely undercuts it immediately. So I ended up liking this one. I thought it was funny. How do you feel, Zen? It was good. Yeah, I really like this one. Normally, I don't like part A, part B ones um, that much. But I thought this one was really funny. When the fake Elizabeth drops the fat ass stack of cash <laughs> on the table and they're all like, yeah, like throwing a crazy party. Yeah. Um, I also think it's really funny that the fake Elizabeth communicates exclusively through Nintendo DS stylus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. It uh, is funny. It's all pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. Let's move on to part B, which is it's what's on the inside that counts, but only to a certain extent. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh... This is another one where almost nothing happens. Um, Gintoki and Sadaharu switch bodies somehow, so Sadaharu uh, pisses and shits in Gintoki's bed with his body, while uh, Gintoki is in Sadaharu's body, and then Kagura and Shinpachi find it, and they're like, Jesus Christ, man. Your life, get your <laughs> fucking shit together, please. Uh, I already had very little respect for you, but now I've, I have even yeah, less respect. What is... Shinpachi says, like, I was already disappointed in you, and now somehow you've gotten worse. <laughs> uh, and then they leave. And then the next day, uh, Kentucky wakes up, and he's like, oh, everything, am I back in my body? But then he's in, he's actually switched bodies with Shinpachi's uh, glasses. Yeah, and then it ends with him in, in the, they show his glasses in his body, and he goes, no, and it ends. Uh, surprising to hear this one was filler. <laughs> to be fair, the other one was too, but this one was straight up, if you could not tell. <laughs> um, I will say that my favorite line in here was when, uh, Gintoki and uh, Sachan finds Gintoki, and she says, like, what is with this new steely gaze that you have on you? Your look of disinterest. <laughs> Uh, and she says my favorite line from her, which is, I'm a poor little bitch who wants your love. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sonharu goes to piss on her. She's like, oh, you just want to do it in front of her? All right, let's go. I'm into it. Whatever you're going for, let's go. <laughs> and Sonharu uh, so, um, the bit where Kentucky's like, wait, I know the solution. All we have to do is fall down the fucking stairs. <laughs> he takes the body, yeah. And he falls yeah. down some stairs. I also, I also like the part where uh, Katsura runs into is like, Kentucky, you feel different. He's like, I don't know if we're going to uh, sit. <laughs> I don't know if we need to find a place to sit. And he goes to go sit down. <laughs> like, he keeps giving dog commands and he's, like, doing it in the background. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, uh, the... Uh, shit, that was, like, one specific. I, I, I like the bit, where, though, I remember the other bit that I really liked was in the beginning where, um, Gintoki and Sadaharu's body was saying, like, I need to, I'm gonna, you know what, I, I need, uh, based off what he's done to my body, I need to beat the shit out of him. And he looks at him while he's, he's like, oh, he's sleeping, I should wake him up. Like, I need to wake him up. Come on, you can't be sleeping all day. And he goes to, like, wake him up or attack him. And he sees him sleeping, he's like, oh, how can I hit him? I'm so, I'm so fucking adorable. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I'm so hot. Yeah, I can't even. <laughs> oh, how am I supposed to hit? Look at his little face. <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought that was really funny. Um, and yeah, I like the part where they're all disappointed in him. And some of the bits were like, uh, Kagura is like saying, like, she, call, she calls him the shit samurai <laughs> after he shit his bed. After uh, Sadaharu shits in his bed. But yeah, it's a very simple episode. Not a lot happens in it. There's just like a little uh, funny moments in it. But it was, uh, funny enough entertained i really didn't know how far they were gonna go with the sachon bit because they got surprisingly far where i was like i want to see where this is going because when he lifts <laughs> his leg right in front of her and she's just like okay intriguing 
go on. Yeah, she's like, all right, all right. Not saying no. I want to see where he's going with this. <laughs> Let's see where he goes. And that reminds me why the time slot of Gintama was eventually taken away from it. It was for stuff like this. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I ended up enjoying it. It was a very silly episode. Not very much happens to it. Never gets resolved. You don't see anything and it ends with a glasses <laughs> uh, Shimpachi bit. Where he's not in Shimpachi's body. He's in the actual Shimpachi that he considers the essence of Shimpachi, which is his glasses. Which is the glasses, yeah. Yeah, that's how I ended up feeling about it. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, it was fine. It wasn't as good as the other one. The other one was really good. This one was like, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, and there was also more reference. I forgot. They said something related to Two Live Rue, which I thought was funny, but I couldn't remember what it was. Now, let's move on to episode 174, which is technically a part A and part B, That which is crazy. <laughs> but it's likely because part B did not have as much material to do an entire episode, so part A is a very quick thing, but um, let's go over part A, which is, are there still people who go to the ocean and yell out, Bacario? Bacayaro? Let's go Bacayaro. Go ahead, Zen. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's, like, debt collectors who are like, hey, we need our fucking money, and they're, like, threatening Gintoki and Hasegawa. So they decide they're going to earn it back by going fishing. Um, and so they're the, the Odd Jobs crew and Hasegawa are on a fishing boat with one of those turtle people. Um, Kagura gets a really big fish, Shipachi gets a really tiny fish, and then Hasegawa pulls up a fish and it's a blow-up doll. Cause they all yell something before they pull the fish up. I don't remember what Kagura or Shipachi yell, might, but I know Hasegawa Bakuy yells. Bakuyaro, isn't it? Maybe. But Hasegawa yells for his wife to come back to him. <laughs> <laughs> and then pulls up a blow-up doll. Um, and he's like, that's it. Like, I'm killing myself. I'm tired. I'm so <laughs> sick of everything. I hate it here. I give up. And the turtle captain gets really fucking pissed off. Um, and is like, don't you ever give up. If you fail once, you try again. And he's like, I failed like ten times. And he's like, then you try a hundred times. <laughs> and Hasegawa's like, moved. And he's like, Captain, you're right. I'm going to catch every fish in the ocean. And then there's like a time skip where they're like bearded. Or not bearded. They have like five o'clock shadow and stuff. And they're like, we did it, y'all. We're men of the sea. And then they're like laying out their catch. And it's just a bunch of like the big fish that Kagura got. And then a bunch of blow-up dolls. <laughs> yeah, and something feels wrong here. And that's where it ends. <laughs> Uh, I can say very quickly, I thought it ended up being very nice. It may be just because I like Hasegawa, and this was <laughs> a very quick Hasegawa bit, but I'm fine with that. Uh, so yes, my my expert review is I like Hasegawa out of 10. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty funny just because, like, the ending bit where they're, like, their clothes are torn up and they're, like, unshaven and stuff and they're like going back I thought that was really funny <laughs> yeah yeah that is legitimate. but there's really nothing to this it was like 10 no it was not minutes even. long if that it wasn't even that it was like 5 minutes long it was maybe the same length of like that remember that Elizabeth short from a while while ago yeah it was like a very it was kind of like that that was it, they, they yeah, also I, I think you're probably right that part B was just like almost a full episode yeah. And they couldn't quite get there, so they just slapped this little tiny thing. Yeah, the front. Which, yeah, which which is perfectly fine. It ends up doing a perfectly good job of doing what filler actually does, which is just kind of filling in the bits before the bigger thing. So let's go into the actual part B, which is the vast majority of this episode, which is when a person is trapped, their inner door is open. Go ahead, Zen. So the Odd Jobs team decide they're going to go get Korean barbecue, and uh, they get in the elevator, and then an old man gets in with the elevator with them. And Shinpachi's like, oh, hey, what floor do you want to go to? While, like, you know, uh, Gintoki and Kagura are talking or whatever. And they're, like, all the way at the top floor, and he's like, I want to go to the first floor. And so they're, like, going down super slow. Uh, and then the elevator gets stuck. And they're like, oh, shit. Uh, the elevator's stuck. Let's hit the emergency button, and Kagura smashes it. Um, and then the old man is like, well, by the way, it's a three-day weekend. Um, we're the only ones here. 
and Gintoki like freaks out. Uh, and they all start like doom posting. They're all like ready to fucking give it up. And the because uh, Kagura's like, oh my god, we're running out of air. It's getting harder to breathe. Um, and then the old man starts talking about how uh, they were trying to do homemade Korean barbecue, and it burnt his house down and killed his wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so Shinpachi's like trying to keep everyone. Um, everyone like happy and he's so they're playing uh, what's it called like the magical, magical banana, banana. Or something. <laughs> magical yeah. banana and he's like everybody come on we gotta stay positive we gotta stay happy um and then he ends up passing out i don't remember why he, he i know he's like the old man ends up revealing mm-hmm. that his wife was not real she was a sex doll or something yeah and uh yeah, so he's yelling. like Shimpachi starts beating him yeah <laughs> and then he passes out uh, and then to save him, Gintoki and Kagura smash a hole in the floor, and they start uh, crawling down like the elevator wire to get him out of there. And it's like this big heartwarming moment where the old man's like, oh my god, if there's a friend in need, you'll overcome anything to save him. And they're like playing magical banana to keep Shinpachi talking so he doesn't like pass out. Uh, and then as soon as they get out of sight the elevator doors open and it's the team to fix the elevator they're like hey we're here yeah sorry it took so long yeah and that's where it ends uh in this episode i ended up liking it a whole bunch because this is one of the very few cases where they're actually showing what is what shimpachi considers his role in the actual group which is trying to keep things as lively as he can while keeping them happy because for like you said the second that uh gintoki and kagura start doom posting they are no longer acting like themselves in the situation that they're in and i think he i think he's saying specifically like at the end when he passes it i was like i'm sorry i tried to keep it up because uh, basically he's trying to get them out of their funk because the way that they're acting right now is not the way that they would typically act and he says if they were acting the way they were and it wasn't like this, then we would find a way out of here. But they're not, so I'm going to try and do something. But in the beginning, he's at least trying to keep them happy and stuff like that. Um, and it finally works at the end, and they break out, and everything's fine. Uh, but I was really enjoying when he was the only one trying to keep things lively. Uh, because he would, he would he was doing, like, Magical Banana. It's like a game where I think it's based off... It's like a word game, like most things in Japan. So, of course, it's lost on us how it actually works. Um... Like, they keep saying, it's like, you have to say something positive. Okay, everyone ready, magical banana, go. And then he would go to the next person, and, like, Kagura's, like, a happy circle. Everyone dies alone. Uh, That (laughs) was so fucking funny. And then Gintoki says, uh, alone, saying something goodbye. And then (laughs) the old guy goes, goodbye is what I never got to say to my family. Yeah. When, uh, I also thought it was really funny when Shinpachi was trying to like compliment the old man. And he was like, oh, right, you love your wife's bento boxes. Oh, man, I'm burning up with envy. He's like, yeah, burning up. That's what happened to my house and my <laughs> wife. And it's why I don't ever get those bento boxes again. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, he tries to invite him to the, hey, you should go to Korean barbecue with us. Oh, if I had never done Korean barbecue, I would still have my wife and kids. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my family wouldn't have died in the fire. <laughs> Would have died in the fire. It was, it's so funny, because at, at some point, like you said, he starts getting on his case, like, listen, man, we're trying to keep it positive, you need to stop bringing up the dead family, <laughs> for the sake of everyone, stop bringing them up, please. And, yeah, I think this episode ends up... Uh, being super funny because it is super dark when everyone's like they're just so ready to be like nah we're we're trapped here we're gonna be stuck here for four days we're hungry and we're not gonna survive nobody's coming for us we're so doomed it's not even funny uh and uh, shimpachi's trying to keep him positive because he knows that there's if if he loses them then there's literally nothing that he can do and like you said the the ending bit here is really if is very nice because it goes into the kind of like dynamic of them going like all right you know what for Shinpachi's sake, we're gonna be we're gonna be trying to do it because this is what we do, and we're the we're the Yorozo group, and we're gonna get shit done. And then they start going down there, and he even tells them like, "Hey, that's a really bad idea." It's like, "Don't worry, we're nothing but people with bad ideas." 
<laughs> we'll make it through somehow. It's a it's a very nice scene, and of course, it immediately gets undercut with like the next minute <laughs> them being would have been saved. But you know, I really liked it. I thought it was very funny. It was very dark, dark funny, which I uh, I really like. <laughs> it ended up being funny to me. So what do you how do you feel, Zen? Uh, it was good. It was funny. Um, I really liked the the bit about the man's the house fire and how often he kept being like, "Oh man, my family's dead." Yeah, uh, the, I the that room. was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked the bit where they were actually like trying to keep Kempachi or uh, Kempachi, uh Shimpachi awake while they were going down the thing. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> when they're like, "Oh, the Yurozu team is the best," and then Kagura's like, "Kagura's the best," and Gintoki then says, "Kagura's the worst," and then Shimpachi goes, "Catherine is the worst." <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. Catherine is actually, yeah, it was very, it was very nice. <laughs> it's a very, uh, a very nice way for them to kind of go off, and it kind of again, like I said, the ending bit here of them going off in their own, and then immediately the next scenario would have been if they just waited a little bit more, they would have been perfectly fine. <laughs> actually, perfectly sums up that t- the entire team and their dynamic. It feels like, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a very. Good, nice episode. Very different from what you would expect from those, uh, from them, like, being stuck in an elevator. Just because Kintoki and Kagura are not acting like their normal selves here. And Shinpachi realizes that something's up because of the way that they're acting. And, yeah. Let's go on to episode 175, which is... (laughs) People of all ages hate the dentist. Good luck with this one, Zen. Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah, so, uh, there, Kitoki is sitting there, and he's like, I really need this, my clock to go faster, uh, but they turn out he's, like, talking out loud, and the nurse is like, can you please shut the fuck up? <laughs> um, and then it turns out he was at a dentist, and he, he has a cavity, and he's afraid of the dentist, um. So he decides he's gonna read Shonen Jump, and then Hichikata also is there for the same reason. And they're both trying to pretend that they're not afraid of the dentist. Um, and Hasuga was like, wow, that was pretty cool. Uh, check it out. And he has like a giant toothbrush hand now. And he's like, uh, they're like, what the fuck is going on? And then other people leave um, with like fucked up stuff. Um, the, the condo shows up and he has Hasegawa's arm on his head. Yeah, on his head. An electric yeah. toothbrush. Yeah. Um, and so Gintoki and Hijikata are like, oh my god, <laughs> this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Uh, so they end up back in the dentist's room, they're like strapped to the chairs, and they're, they're just robots. Um, and so they're trying not to get fucked up, so they have to pick a, a type of operation. So Gintoki picks the one that has a massage, and so he ends up getting a massage robot, like grafted onto his chest. And then Hichikata's like, aha, the correct answer is obviously the salad bar, because you can't possibly graft a salad bar onto your chest. Uh, And then they end up grafting a robot that just eats salad, and it doesn't use mayonnaise, which upsets Hichikata even more. Is that a salad bar because it's an old uh, baba, like an old woman? (laughs) Yeah, like an old woman. Um, Then they fix their teeth, and they're like, oh my god, that didn't even hurt. And they're like, yeah, uh, that's what the that's what the other stuff is for to distract you from the pain of your teeth. Um, and then later on, they still have the cavities, like they didn't fix it. And then they're going to a real hospital, and the hospital's like, we are not, we are not uh, a dentist. You should go to a dentist. And they're like, we don't give a shit about the teeth anymore. Just fix the robots, the broken <laughs> robots. Yeah, that is where it ends. Um, okay, some bits here. That part, the, I think the best part is actually when their robot, their crotch robots, start reacting to the pain. <laughs> where they were like, oh yeah, don't worry, the pain isn't going to you, it's going to them, it should be fine. And these robots are going so hard back and forth. <laughs> they're like going back and forth like crazy, they're spinning around, they're feeling intense pain. They're vomiting up, like, what's supposed to be blood, but it's, like, bolts and buckets. <laughs> they're, like, uh, they have buckets and bolts. Um, they're sick. He was like, it should be fine. They're robots. And then they start having false memories implanted of them about having a life <laughs> with their crotch robots. 
<laughs> and Kentucky's like, oh, these are all clearly fake memories. Stop showing me these fake memories to try to make me feel bad about the pain that you're going through. And then for Hijikata, when he's having those same memories, the only difference is that hijikata has been replaced by a vegetable. So he's, there's like a, <laughs> a giant eggplant standing on the side of a door. <laughs> Uh, it's really funny. And then when they are tearfully asking, please fix our crunch robots. And they're like holding them in their hands and they're crying. Yeah, when they're crying. Yeah, yeah they're holding on to them. He's like, whatever, the cavity will go away, but please save their lives. I thought that was funny. Um, the bit with Hasegawa where he's, uh, he's got a giant toothbrush arm now. Um, before then, when he was going to do, like, his dentist stuff, it's really funny because he's, like, in extreme pain, he's, like, screaming, and then he dies on the table, and then they're like, what's going on? No, why is he dying? He's like, get the defibrillator. He's like, why does the dentist need a defibrillator? And they're, like, hitting him with a defibrillator, and they cut off his arm, and they put it in soy sauce, they say, I think, or something like that. Um... Uh, the, the, and then the other bit is that not only did they replace a brush on his hand, they also replaced a brush with his penis. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They yeah. took his dick off and gave him another toothbrush. Which, which maybe has one of the craziest lines ever that I was surprised that they were able to say. Uh, cause he says like, you know, I really need a, about my toothbrush. I really need like a good Brussel. He's like. And then Gitoki says in his, in his mind, is like, how are you supposed to even use the other toothbrush? The only way you'd even be able to get a handle of it is if you had your wife still with you. <laughs> that's, the only, <laughs> that's the only person that's ever getting close to that toothbrush. Um, and yeah, the, the other bit with Kondo, when he has the arm, he goes like, I noticed that the arm on the toothbrush isn't really going to my face. And then the the, first, the nurse person who's there is like, eh, it's fine. Just if, if if it doesn't reach your face, just do it manually. And then like, the, what the fuck was the point of putting the arm on his head? <laughs> if their advice is like, hey, it's okay. If the mechanical toothbrush don't work, just do it yourself. It'll be fine. Um, that bit's funny. I like the part where Hijikata and, uh, Gintoki are having, when Gintoki goes to go read, like, Jump, he sees that it's not there, but he wants something to distract himself, and so they start having an argument about the other, because, as established a long time ago, Hijikata is a fan of the rival of Shonen Jump, and not actually Shonen Jump. Um, so he's, <laughs> Gintoki starts talking shit about the other magazine, <laughs> and the other magazine was like having a giant celebration he's like oh and he had like a, a collaboration with another magazine which is also another rival to shonen jump and he's like oh were you just sad that you weren't invited <laughs> is that the reason why you're feeling so hurt about it he's like no no not the reason at all and then when they're going to sit down and the fact that neither one of them can leave because they don't want to show the other that they're afraid <laughs> is really funny as they sit there they start like bullshitting saying like oh yeah i'm a big driller I have a drill at home. Do you want to go to a drill convention? <laughs> like a drill, a drill. Yeah, when they're trying to like this? impress one another, how not scared they are. Yeah, that was really funny. And then when they yeah, walk I'm in, a, there, I'm a drill guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a driller. And then he's like, "Oh, get this guy away from me! I would never want to spend a week in drilling. That sounds horrible." That was really good. Um, I like the part where, when, after hearing all the bad things going on, there's a mother with a son in the office, and she immediately runs away with the child, <laughs> when she sees what they've done to Hasegawa. <laughs> She's be like, no, we're not staying here anymore. But as they're, like, walking into the back, they're just saying, like, please, anyone with a sane brain, stop us. <laughs> please, please, oh god. <laughs> this is such a bad idea. Uh... The I like the name of the little robot thing because it was like uh, Nakayama san and the Battle Fairy Shazan san, and then it turns out that Battle Fairy uh, Shazan san, which you assume is the robot, is actually Nakayama san. So then Hijik uh, not Hijikata, um, yeah, no, no Hijikata. He thinks that he's gonna get the normal nurse now, and then it's revealed that there was a second robot inside the first robot, and that is. Yeah. <laughs> That is Nakayama. They have like a giant drill and they try and warn him like, hey, don't let this hit your mouth or it will tear you apart. <laughs> like, don't. It's like, I'm pretty sure this thing barely even fits in my mouth. 
and in general, uh, I, it's another enjoyable for me. It, I think it's literally because it's Gintoki and Hijikata. <laughs> Both of them together end up making it really funny, and I like the way that they play off of each other. So that's how I felt. How do you feel, Zen? It was okay. It wasn't. I tried my least favorite one of all the ones that we. Mm. Uh, may, maybe the bald one, one was, or the Gintoki switching places was not a hard one. But those were so short. Like, I think I like this one the least because it was also a full episode, and I was yeah. like, okay, like that wasn't that funny. It would probably be a little fine. bit better as a uh, like a twelve minute one, like a party yeah, or a party it, one. A full a full length episode. I don't know that this had the legs for that, but it was yeah, funny. yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, you can start to see some of the. And funny enough, this was actually from two chapters. <laughs> That's even weirder to think that this was a two chapter event. So you can't blame it on anything like that. <laughs> that is, uh, he decided to make a two chapter event based on the dentist. Oh wait, I actually like the bit where um, Gintoki says like, "How could you punish me for liking sweets?" That hasn't been my defining character trait in so long. When when was the last episode that you saw me had sweets? And it literally happened like a couple episodes ago. <laughs> Like no, you very clear. He's trying. Oh yeah, to... at the fake Elizabeth episode, I think. Was... Yeah, he literally. <laughs> he had a parfait. He was eating it. He was literally. Yeah. That is a defining character trait. Okay, that's episode one seventy five. Let's move on to the final episode for this batch, and the final, not the final filler, but the final filler for this batch of episodes, which is episode one seventy six. Countdown begins in the previous episode. Gintoki uh, was hyping up that the countdown is coming, and then Shinpachi and Kagura go like, are we doing this again? And he goes like, what? <laughs> and then thinking that this is another fake ep- ending of the show. Uh, and then he reveals what the actual countdown is. Go ahead, Zen, what is happening in this episode. So this is just like an award show episode, kind of one of the ones that they do. It's like a, a like recap uh, yeah. where they, they do like a voting where they count down all the best lines. I think they do nine of them. They do um, ten. They do ten. Okay. Starting with number uh, I know one. the first one is is Bonsai when he's like, you're a ghost and ghosts should stay dead. And then it's Kentucky with like the uh, what I wanted to protect has never changed kind of thing. Um mm-hmm. Number two is Hijikata from the arc where Okita's sister dies. It, his line where it's like, uh, I just want the woman I love to be happy. Uh, the third one, I think, is not actually from the show. No, it's from like, an OVA. Yeah. And they're like, hey, have we even shown this? And Gintoki's <laughs> like, ah, don't worry about it. Like, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> we got our lawyers on the and We apologize. Yeah. Um, then the musicians who do the current ending uh, show up for a minute, and then they play the ending to a montage of all the girls. Uh, then the next line is Gintoki fighting the big Amanto in the arc where they have helped like the kindly old man with the orphans. Mm-hmm. Um. Then it's Gintoki fighting the Harusame from the arc where he saves the, the pig lady from the drugs. Uh, yes. uh, then it's Sogo saying, like, if I don't stop you now, like, I'll never be able to live with myself. Then Kagura gets pissed, and she's like, why are they all serious, cool people lines? It's not what this show is about. Uh, we need to edit them to be more like our show. And so she replays them all, but she, like, bleeps out specific words <laughs> to make it sound like Gintoki's saying, like, nasty shit. And he gets all mad. Uh, then we have an entire we... montage of all the bleeps. Yes. And the censorship of the series. And then Toki and Hichikata talking, and then Gintoki saving Shimpachi from Prince Hada's monster, like, all the way back in the beginning, when uh, Hasegawa still had his job. Uh, then it's just a huge montage of everything they've censored since the start of the show, uh, with Otsu's song "Censorship Sucks." <laughs> I then, know uh, writers who use subtext Otsu. Zen, and they're all cowards. <laughs> yeah, it's literally just them saying "Censorship Sucks." Um, then it's a montage of Katsura saying "It's not whatever, it's Katsura." Like all of the times he's done it, which is an insane <laughs> amount of times. Yeah. Um, and then so. Prince Hada shows up and like takes over and starts narrating it for them. And they're like, no, not again. We got so much hate mail when you did Takasugi. You can't do this again. 
And he's like, oh, I'm doing it again. And he goes back <laughs> through every clip and he rereads all of them. And he says, special bonus one. And he does one for Takatsuji. And then he starts singing the song. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really good. La, 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 la. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and then it, it ends with uh, Stairway Generation. Um, ending with all like the all the 3D models that they spent the money on. Like, they show the ones from Countdown. Uh, but then also in the background is the Virtual Fighter. Uh, <laughs> like, the, the, the Tama from Tama Quest. It's also there falling down. It's like one of the random things, like a thing of Elizabeth. Prince Hada as well shows up as one of the things. Their, their house and stuff like that. Yeah, and then it ends. It also ends with a teaser for the next like, ar- big arc, which is the the next big arc that we'll be tackling here on Shonen Archive and talking about. But yeah, that's the effective end of this batch of episodes. Uh, this countdown, I ended up liking it because for some reason I really like all the recaps of <laughs> Gintama. This actually was pretty nice because it actually had like a bunch of stuff from older episodes that I forgot. I was like, oh yeah, I remember that moment. That was cool. And it had been a while since we've seen some of these. Um, I was surprised to see that nothing from the Benny Zucker arc was in here at all. Surprising, surprising thing to hear. But I guess it is quotes. It's really more moments in Benny Zucker than actual quotes yeah it's thinking. not a lot of like quote this is specifically lines from the man. show but it's so man there should have been moments you know i'm gonna talk shit on this top 10 it should have been moments but i guess it's, in order for it to work out it had to be prince hada doing the ones saying it back um i like the montages i like that we got like an actual like montage for the ending song um because this is the last time we'll hear this ending song at least as far as we know um, and we got to end it with like a full montage of all the women, um, and it is every single one of them that you would expect. The one that gets the least amount is Catherine, who has a very quick two point <laughs> two point one second like f- quick frame of Catherine on the screen, and then cut away, <laughs> which I thought was funny. I don't know if it's on purpose. They specifically sh- she was she literally has the least amount of screen time of all the female characters that are shown on there and that includes Shinpachi dressing up in his female form. <laughs> oh, I also forgot one of the funniest bits about this is they're like little like 3D model like cartoon looking things. Mm-hmm. And for some reason Shinpachi has a really huge sideways like baseball cap on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I assume this is a parody of the countdown thing that they're doing. So I don't know fully about that, but I did like that he has a giant hat for some reason. <laughs> I oh yeah yeah now that I think about it he doesn't wear a hat why is he wearing no, that no yeah he's just got a giant ball cap on it's really funny it is it fits him strikingly well but he doesn't actually wear any hats in there um yep yeah, and I also liked when they showed all the censorship things because it reminded me oh yeah all the this is such a good series to watch and sometimes I wonder because my brother does the way that I'm situated in my room my brother does see what happens on my computer screen whenever i'm watching gintama or any other anime so i have to wonder what he's thinking about as like this non like this almost three minute long montage of like dudes dicks being censored on screen plays <laughs> what are the con what is the context of all this going on it's a wonder to behold for sure and yeah and i liked uh, the prince hada stuff i was uh, happy to see him again again this is maybe one of my favorite characters that only shows up for this bit and he does this bit every single recap and it seems like a lot of people do not like this bit and that makes me like this bit even more (laughs) (laughs) especially with the takatsuji bit where he does his line again where he's like and a special bonus here i am back again with takatsuji and then he does the little song of it it was so good when he starts like singing the little song and they cut back to his 3d oh yeah where he's like bonsai can't you tune to my song (laughs) And they come back to him and he's got like he's got a little guitar now in 3D. He goes, oh, sorry. <laughs> and then it just ends. Uh, really funny. I also like that in the middle of this they start complaining about some of the things. Like Shinpachi says, like, I feel like I don't have a shot. I feel like none of my quotes are gonna make it because all of them are serious quotes. 
<laughs> and like you said, when they start talking about like uh, when uh, Gintoki starts like talking shit on Hijikata having the number two quote of the entire series, he's like, whatever. He's just the silly goofball. Here are some quotes from him, and it's like him saying like, "I love mayonnaise." Oh, it's stuck. <laughs> like all his all these moments. Yeah, it's like him all the dumb stuff that he says, and then like that's not fair. <laughs> it's like ha ha ha. Look at him. Everyone pointed to laugh at the silly man. <laughs> I thought that was good. Apparently, this wasn't shown for us, but when they showed that OVA, apparently in the actual airing of it, they showed an ad of the OVA. <laughs> That's funny. That's amazing. You gotta love it. <laughs> you gotta respect them for it. Uh, and yeah, I always like one of these. And I, again, I I like the... By the end of this one, I feel like I finally made peace with liking Stairway Generation. For some reason... Knowing that this was actually the last time I would hear it in here, I was like, you know what? This was a pretty okay song. It just wasn't the ending song, which is the the better of the two songs. Uh, the wo- the Waini. Really good stuff. I also oh, like, yeah, the ending is much better. Yes, for sure, for sure. Good. That, that's why... Like yeah. Yeah, Star Generation is perfectly fine. Perfectly good. And I liked it here at the end, the kind of show. They always do a good job with this one when they're like actually like saying, like, right, this is the last time we're going to use these OP and EDs. They at least let them go away in a like memorable way. Where you're just like, either it's an ending montage to the arc itself, or they play it in a way that's at least memorable. And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, good times. But yeah, that is episode 176. How do you feel about it, Zen? Uh, I thought it was funny. It's, I, I kind of like all these little recap ones. Like they're not really that interesting. I could do without them, but when we when they play and you watch them, you're kind of like, ah, I like yeah. this show. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely one of those where it's like, ah, looking back, I like this show. Especially as we keep going further and further deep, and it's it's fun to look back. And to be fair, they always do a good job of looking back to everything. Like when they do the fact that that montage is literally every single female character that they have ever shown in any capacity, <laughs> even if they were in for like the smallest amounts, they made sure to show them. That was good stuff. Uh, there's dedication there that I can appreciate. But yeah, that is it for this batch of episodes. What's coming up next? Glad you asked, because next is the next arc of Gintama, which is the Red Spider arc, which is episodes 177 to 181. That is five episodes. That is a serious arc. Uh, So that will be an entire episode in of itself. And then next is... Next after that will likely be... Hmm... I think I'm still working on how we're going to do the next ones coming up. Because we have like a good set of ones, but I need to know if any of them are going to be potentially serious ones. I think most of them are likely just not. So we're probably good to kind of go in a various particular order. Like after Red Spider arc is the character pull arc, and I doubt that that's a... <laughs> just by the name alone, <laughs> I don't think that that is a serious arc. <laughs> So probably we can not. <laughs> we can probably get away with doing those three, and then the follow up episode, and then the next one after that is another tiny arc of two episodes, followed up by two unrelated episodes, and then another tiny arc. And yeah, that's kind of how it goes on from here for a bit. And uh, we're getting very close to the end of this season, and then near the end of the season, we're gonna have to talk about some specific things because there's a specific gap here of a year (laughs) that we'll talk about and we will i was looking in yeah there's a i think the final episode of this season happens in 2010 and the show does not come back until 2011 a full year later um damn yeah, but there is some stuff that is talked about, and there is actual, like, things going on that we will talk about. I'm still working out how we're going to talk about it, but we are going to talk about it. Basically, what what happens next is Gintama sees the season as it is, and then there's a full-on break of a year, and then we get into the new season. But in between that, they release something called Yoroniki Gintama, which is a rerun of 51 episodes of Gintama in HD with some stuff put into them, like Omaka style things, and with new OPs and new EDs. Um, 
what likely is going to happen is for that, I will just explain very quickly what happened, and then we will watch the OPs and EDs. But yeah, we, I don't know if we can do 51. 51 episodes of repeats of the best ep- they what they considered the best episodes, starting with uh, them heating up the Benny Zakura movie. This is where we would have likely come in. This is where we could have probably saved the Benny Zakura movie for, <laughs> was for this gap to explain it. Um, but either way. Stuff is being worked on. We will at least watch those OPs and EDs, because those are actually brand new OPs and EDs that were made for, like, re-watching stuff. It was very weird to be like, I have never heard of an anime doing this, of being like, here's 51 old episodes with a new OP and ED. <laughs> Not really something I've ever heard of, ever, until just now. <laughs> but yeah, well... Well, don't worry. Something will be worked on. We'll we'll talk about it. But that's all stuff to happen in the future. But that's it for Shonen Archive this week. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you want more Zenrado content, go to Zenrod's channel where he does Shonen and Chill, where he talks about the new uh, Shonen Jump mangas. Uh, if you want to hear anything about those, uh, the, the new Shonen Jump mangas that Zen reads, <laughs> Zen and his co-host reads. <laughs> Yes. I should be very specific. Not not... All, it's a lot of them, but not all of them. Yeah. How many, since you've started uh, Shonen and Chill, how many have you been reading have been canceled? <laughs> or axed? Since I started, period, like yeah. with, with Ocean Man, or yeah. since, um, since, since the Ocean. new host? Since Ocean oh, Man. Oh, God. Uh, okay, well, it's been three years. So, uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, the big ones that haven't been canceled are Jutsu Kaisen, um, obviously, my hero. Obviously, um, Undead Unluck, Mission Yozakura Family, Sakamoto Days. Um, Roboka other song. ones. <laughs> the, the the ultimate uh, uncancelable Roboka. Uh, the oh, robot. Well, name. we don't read that one. But I yeah, know. That one hasn't been <laughs> Just either, like bringing but, uh, it up to antagonize you, that it's I, I actually do think if you go back and start watching Shonen and Chill from the beginning. Oh, Chainsaw Man too, obviously. Yeah. Um, if you start watching Shonen and Chill from the beginning, I think there's a decent chance that we have talked about about as many canceled series as we have um, non-canceled ones. I would believe that. I would believe it because the X uh, comes quick in Shonen and Shonen. The X comes comes for all. Uh, Ichinose family just got canceled, like last week. Jesus. Christ. And then we also lost uh, Icehead Gill this week. That sounds like a great name. <laughs> Icehead. I have Gil? not ever a single chapter of it. Damn. <laughs> but it uh, uh, it got canned at chapter twenty, so it was not doing very well to only make it twenty chapters and then get exploded. Damn. Have you guys uh, any plans to ever talk about the monthly going-ons of what's going on in Final Fantasy Tactics, a.k.a. World Trigger? <laughs> no, um, because I read it and I still have no fucking idea what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I just recently caught up with it. I was like, damn, we've been here for three years. Yeah, it's been so long. And it's the same thing every time. Like, it, every time they do a test, it's always, like, more or less the same. Sh- and, like... Every character is not memorable, and they all kind of look the same, except for the guy that looks like Shimpachi and the main kid. Yeah, which um, are the main characters, and the yeah, which are like the leads. Yeah, and, um, the, and the, a and lot the of the background. I think there's two background. I think they're like brothers or something. They actually look exactly the same, but they have different like hair color. Yeah, it's it's, um, it's very unfortunate. That World Trigger has to be on like a, a monthly, like a kind of monthly statement. It's, it's not even monthly. It's like one month on. One month off, and then when the the on month, they do two chapters at once. Yeah, it's the, really weird. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's not one yeah. chapter a month. It's like uh, chapters come out every two months, but then you get two months of chapters worth, but all at one time. It's very strange, and it's like impossible to like keep up with because it's yeah. so boring. <laughs> every single time, I have to like re remember how what's going on. At least now it seems like they might finally be close to ending it, and they'll be going to the the part B of this arc because this arc is not over. <laughs> they have to go to the the part where I, I realized that when they were going through it, when they said like, "Well," because like I'm sorry that I failed on this test. It's like it's okay. I didn't really hire you for the written part. It was for the desk job. It was for the battles that are coming up. And I said, "There's fucking battles related to this coming." <laughs> 
I forgot this is the when this started so many years ago I forgot. Yeah, very unfortunate. You can always tell by the because there's been th I've checked it because I had to check it. It was like there's been like 30 something chapters that have gone on for here and that's the part where you're like World Trigger was supposed to be a weekly series and it's been forced to move into a weird monthly schedule because of the health issues of the main uh, mangaka. That's the reason why that they had to kind of go on this weird schedule because sometimes they're doing better than other days and that's why like it's like it comes out whenever they have something to release. That's why sometimes there's like double of a chapter in like the span of like a week or so, but then other times it's like now months go by <laughs> and you kind of go like, ah, well, unfortunate. Sucks to hear because again, I think a lot of the action, when there was fighting happening in World Trigger, it was really cool. <laughs> I just want to go back to those days. I want to go back yeah, to... Yeah, it's like, because World Trigger combat's really creative and, like, fun yeah. and, like, interesting the way all the powers, like, the power system's cool. Um, and then they do nothing with it, and they just, like, take tests on the computer. Yeah, they they, they play... Well, and when they brought out the character modeler, and they started talking about it, I was like, I don't know if I can continue this. I, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was the closest I've ever been to be like, I think I'm done. It was like, let's talk about the stat allocations of our little dudes here. It's like no, <laughs> no, not like this, <laughs> not not like this. Please, just end it. <laughs> Please, just end it. I'm so close. But anyway, World Trigger. There you go. If you are looking for a World Trigger talk, we just had it right there. If you want more videos featuring me, you can always go to my channel where I do variety of stuff: uh, Shonen and Chill, Fake Grand Order, whatever random thing that I stream with Zen. Which this time it seems to be a Pokemon trading card game on Mondays. And, yeah, that's it for today's, uh, sh thank you very much for joining. As always, if you want to show support for the series, because I've been forgetting to say that, you can always leave a like and comment. It does help out. Uh, typically, you're okay, because this main channel is supported by Fago. And as long as I remember to have a banger video in Fago every, like, three months or so, the channel will always be fine and growing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all you, we need yeah well, all you need so you should be fine on that part and this is okay to stay here for the dedicated people who are where to see it but if you actually want to see this grow then that's the best way of doing it but otherwise hey it's okay i always got for go <laughs> as long as i have for go i'll be perfectly fine as far as the channel it allows me to do whatever the hell i want and with impunity as long as i remember to feed the beast and thankfully i like this beast so <laughs> i'm glad to hang out with it <sighs> But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back next week for Kuroko's Basketball, I swear to God, and Gintama. <laughs> now that he said we're going to do it, work is going to come up and we're not going to be able to record. That's oh. going to be another week that we miss Kuroko. And then we're gonna going to go to Jutsu look, Kaisen the following week. I'm going to look my boss straight in her eyes and say, I need to watch Kuroko's Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't work right now. I, I need to I, watch Kuroko's basketball. I need to see Kuroko's basketball. But the strike is over. I know, but I promise a man does not go back on the word. This is I the promise of the people that I would watch Kuroko's basketball. This is the promise that Wookie made. <laughs> That's a Kuroko reference. If you did not catch it, <laughs> that's what I'll say to her specifically. And then I'll get in trouble for potential mansplaining. And then we'll, you know, we'll be, I'll be fun. <laughs> this is the hypothetical situation where this ends with me being fired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. Until next time. Peace out. <laughs> say Bye. goodbye, Zen. Bye, everybody.